about a 48 inch wide by a 24 inch tall opening on this shot blaster. It has four LS turbo shot wheels on it. The system is set up so that you can clean angle iron, channel iron, I beams, wide flange I beams, and you can control the line speed of this blaster as well as the amperage on the blaster. The operational sequence of this blaster is the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to turn the dust collector to the on position. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn the blast cycle on. The system will sequentially start. The lower wheels will start, then the upper wheels will start. All the auger motors sequence so that not all the motors turn on at the same time. And you want to reset the total system. To do that, pull out your safety stop and push the reset button that energizes your control panel. The next thing that you do is you turn the dust collector into the on position. Then you turn the blast cycle on. The blaster sequentially starts. The auger, the blast propeller motors, upward and lower. You can control the rollers on this forward and backwards as well as the speed. To turn it on, you use this button to control your speed. You can use this one. And the forward and reverse, on and off, is right there. Forward. Control your speed. Brake. Reverse. Off. Slow it down. Then reverse it. This system is equipped with a sonic air blow-off system with adjustable nozzles. You can control the position that you want it to blow the shot off of the part. It's a very important feature anytime that you've got a flat product to be able to blow the abrasive off of the system and back into the blaster so that you don't have to replenish it quite as often. This also has the ability to shut off each nozzle if it's not needed or you can leave it wide open. You have adjustable nozzles on both the left and the right side. We'll put you in the back and get you a fire. Okay. It's really important when you string the elevator bucket over the top drum pulley. When you join the two pieces together, the top piece comes down and comes out this way, and the bottom piece comes up and comes out this way, and the splice is like this. Do not splice it to the inside, make sure it's spliced to the outside. Then you'll want to manually bump the starter without any shot in the system so that you can get it to track after you tension the belt. There are two adjustment bolts at the top of this elevator. You've got the, the elevator belt tight. You go to the top of the blaster and you'll tension the belt. Once it's tight, you'll want to go over and manually start the elevator and adjust the tracking one way or the other, and you'll want to adjust the tracking very slowly. Turn and let it run for a moment so that the belt moves over until you get it to track as close to center as you can. This shot is of one of the two adjusting bolts that will tension and adjust your elevator belt. This is the air distribution box. On the air distribution box, you have four valves that will be adjusted and set from the factory. When the machine is running, depending upon the size of the abrasive that you use, you can control the amount of air that goes through by pulling the dust off as well as the shot that might be in your system. This is also where we pull off uh, dirt that comes through this shot called the air wash. All of this will be set from the factory and you should not have to adjust that. At the top of the elevator there's a safety screen to catch any large objects that might come back.
to blow up. A little bit more. This piece of material was blasted at four foot a minute, and I would say we've got better than an SP6. It's probably closer to a, uh, except for the areas where it was sitting directly on the roller, we've got an SP, SP10 on it.